Here's a guy who thinks Cosmic Skeptic accidentally made an argument in favor of theism by pointing out that the existence of an all-powerful, perfectly good god is contradicted by the existence of animal suffering. Now you have to know that the case Alex puts forward has nothing to do with animal suffering which is inflicted by humans. Instead, he exclusively focuses on the suffering wild animals endure apart from human involvement. And you're about to hear plenty of examples of that from Alex himself. His claim is essentially that the existence of an all-powerful and all-loving God is implausible given the amount of pain animals have to live with in the natural order created by God. And since there are literally trillions of animals, the problem of animal suffering is, according to Alex, even bigger than the problem of human suffering. Or as he puts it, If the problem of suffering is historically one of Christianity's biggest problems, then the problem of animal suffering is its biggest. I don't think the quantity of suffering is the most relevant issue. If there is a God who is all-powerful and perfectly good, I don't understand how any suffering, even if it were rare and mild, could exist. If there is a being who exists who can prevent this, but who chooses not to, I don't understand what it means to say that such a being is perfectly good. That seems like a contradiction to me. If human life is, as I've argued, infused with pain, then non-human animal life is defined by pain. Okay, let's pause here for a moment. I don't know where Alex gets this idea that animal life is defined by pain. I mean, are we really to believe that the thing that defines a dolphin, a butterfly, or a chimpanzee is the experience of pain? Why is this the ultimate identity marker for what it means to live as an animal? I don't think Alex means this literally. He says that if human life is infused with pain, then animal life is defined by it. It seems to me that he's making a hyperbolic relative statement rather than a literal one. Why not the urge to reproduce or the urge to feed? No, it's pain, says Alex, and we're gonna see later that this directly contradicts evolutionary theory. But let's indulge Alex for a moment and see why he thinks that pain is the real deal. Animals in the wild are subject to endless torment from all angles of their existence. Yeah, sure, I totally buy that. No, I mean, come on, seriously? Does Cosmic Skeptic really think that we're gonna fall for his emotional appeal? That all animals from the moment they're born until they die are endlessly tormented? I don't think it's an emotional appeal. If suffering exists at all, that seems to contradict the idea that a being which is both all-powerful and perfectly good exists. That's a conceptual objection, not an emotional one. To say that non-human animal existence is defined by pain sounds like hyperbole to me. But that's irrelevant because there is still an apparent contradiction to the idea that any suffering at all exists alongside an all-powerful, perfectly good being. This is especially the case with animal suffering. Human suffering is often justified by genesis 317. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until your return to the ground. This of course doesn't explain why the guilt and punishment for disobedience became hereditary. Adam and Eve's descendants weren't involved, so why do we have to live in in such a difficult world. The reason animal suffering is such a problem for Abrahamic religions in particular is the question of why non-human animals, who not only had nothing to do with the disobedience except for the serpent, I suppose, and don't even have any relation to the perpetrators, also have to suffer. Man, and I always thought Alex doesn't believe in hell. Yeah, I mean, look at these, the torment is tremendous. Or here, torment from every angle of their existence. I mean, consider that while you're watching this video, every wild animal is being tormented every single second of its life. God is so mean. If God is both all-powerful and perfectly good, then it seems to me that his existence is precluded by even the mild discomfort of occasionally stepping on a pointy rock. A God who is both all-powerful and perfectly good would not only abstain from being so mean, but would also disallow anything less than total and eternal bliss. Sometimes apologists will give the Job response to this objection. They will say, who are you to question God? What do you know? He probably 
possibly allow suffering for some unknown greater purpose that makes up for it. Let's say that's true. Let's say there is a greater purpose that is so great that its greatness makes up for all the suffering he imposed. This only justifies the suffering if this supposedly all-powerful God does not have the power to achieve this purpose without imposing suffering. An all-powerful God who is also perfectly good would achieve his purposes without the suffering. What I want you to catch is this. Alex's case is essentially an emotional appeal that seriously lacks nuance. It's not an emotional appeal, it's pointing out a contradiction. Sure, he's being hyperbolic in doing so, but that doesn't change the fact that the essential problem is conceptual and logical, not emotional. Remember that, according to Alex, animal suffering is not just any old problem Christianity faces, but it's historically its biggest problem. He claims that it's far easier to explain the tremendous amount of pain plaguing animals against the assumption that an all-loving and all-powerful God does not exist. Now pause. Think about this. What would we expect to find if we assume that there is no God, and animals in nature are just randomly mutating and evolving and competing for resources with no divine guidance? Well, we'd expect pretty much exactly what we observe in the real world, a messy bloodbath and a struggle for survival. And what would we expect to see if we assumed the existence of an all-loving and all-powerful God? Maybe some level of suffering that we might not be able to fully explain, but nothing even remotely approaching the level of horror and pain that actually exists in the natural world. I agree that Alex is making a mistake by focusing on the quantity of suffering rather than the fact that it exists at all. I think if there really is a being that is all-powerful, all-knowing, and perfectly good, there could not, in fact, be any suffering whatsoever. I don't think even the smallest conceivable amount of suffering is commensurate with the existence of such a god. It is incalculably easier to account for this suffering on an atheistic worldview. Now let's apply Alex's logic to the following hypothetical scenario. Let's say we happened not to find a messy bloodbath and that it was not the case that animal life is defined by pain, but instead we found a world in which animal life happens to be defined by pleasure, a world in which animals are not endlessly tormented in an earthly hell, but where they are alive and well, healthy and happy, and enjoying themselves, in a kind of earthly heaven instead. The world we see is not defined by suffering or pleasure. If there is no God and evolution created organisms, what we would expect to find is pleasure existing as an incentive to survive and reproduce, and suffering existing as a disincentive to injury and death. That's exactly what we see. I strongly suspect that Alex would agree with this. To focus on his obvious hyperbole about animal existence being defined by suffering seems like bad faith to me. Such blissful animal existence would not, according to Alex's own logic, constitute the biggest problem of Christianity, but the biggest problem of atheism. Because if it is incalculably easier to account for the suffering, that is, the horror and pain that actually exists in the natural world, on an atheistic worldview, it also holds that it would be incalculably harder to account for a happy animal existence on an atheistic worldview, and at the same time incalculably easier to account for it on a Christian worldview. I would agree if such existence were perfectly happy. Since it isn't, it seems much more compatible with atheism than Christianity at least insofar as God is defined as both all-powerful and perfectly good. Next, this dude quotes a scientist who says that animal life is mostly happy. Being just back from a trip with the tent into the wilderness, I realized once again the truth of the statement, most wild animals are happy most of the time. I say that because I keep seeing animals in the wild and they almost always seem content and happy. Some are frolicking in the sun, some are playing, some are making love, some are resting and simply enjoying themselves. In only very rare occasions do I see animals who are suffering. Well, I would not have thought this statement to be remarkable, but for some people it is. For people like Alex, you mean? Let's continue. My primary argument for the above statement that most wild animals are happy most of the time is not just my observation, but also from evolution. Being happy is an important psychological state for animals in order to be healthy. A happy animal has not just a much better immune system, he or she is also active and inquisitive. Being happy and content is a vital ingredient to procreate and to live safely and long. Hence, evolution will produce animals who are mostly happy. 
Evolution will produce at least some happiness insofar as it is an effective incentive to survive and reproduce and produces other benefits. But I don't understand how you infer any ratio from this between happiness and suffering among animals generally, since both positive and negative emotions produce advantages for survival. However, even if the ratio of happiness to suffering is high, the fact that there is any suffering at all still seems to contradict the idea of an all-powerful and perfectly good god. Of course, if you assume evolutionary theory, this makes complete sense, doesn't it? Happiness is the psychological state most conducive to survival, which is why evolution will produce happy animals. What's most conducive to survival is a range of emotions that each make their own contribution to survival. What the optimum ratios between those emotions are depends on the situation in which any given organism is living. According to Alex, animal life is supposedly defined by pain, a gloomy existence of endless torment in an earthly hell. He tells us that, of course, this is pretty much exactly what we'd expect to find if we assume that the all-loving and all-powerful God of Christianity does not exist. And he calls this Christianity's biggest historical problem. What is his case built on? Mainly on emotions. No, his case is built mostly on the fact that the existence of suffering contradicts the existence of an all-powerful, perfectly good God. This is a logical objection not an emotional one. Now remember, it's Alex himself who asserted that it is incalculably easier to account for this suffering on an atheistic worldview. What he meant by this suffering is the messy bloodbath we supposedly observe in the real world, which, according to Alex, is what we would expect to find if we assume that there is no God. Well, the only problem is that we don't actually observe this suffering in the real world, but only in the fictional world Alex has orchestrated for us in his emotional drama. What we do observe in the real world is that animals are, as science tells us, almost always content, suffering in only very rare occasions and happy most of the time. Which is also incompatible with the existence of an all-powerful, all-knowing, perfectly good God. To everyone who helps me out on Patreon, you're a big help, thanks so much.